Now, it's always fun to take an early look at who will do what next season immediately following the national championship game. And while the roster movement between coaches and players isn't done yet, we do have somewhat of a skeleton of who can make some serious moves towards actually winning the national championship in 2024. Now, the typical big dogs, they're going to be lurking. Bama, Georgia, Texas, we know the whole gang. But if we're going to take a look at a team to not only make the playoff, not some cute Hansel and Gretel story, but actually have a legitimate chance to win it when they get there, to me, it's Ole Miss. Now, this isn't just a fun team to keep an eye on. This team has every element to take the brand from the suburbs to the estate, from the nice hotel room to the Kapua suite. And Lane Kiffin's using the transfer portal to put the final touches on his monster. He's basically Dr. Frankenstein. And come September 2024, he's going to be ready to let the monster loose on the villagers. Now, the Rebels have the offense. We know that. With Lane Kiffin, nobody should ever doubt that. But the important pieces they return are also huge. Adding players like Walter Nolan through the transfer portal, Trey uh, Barron and Princely along the defensive line with the depth they already have, that's going to be what could push them over the edge to greatness and give them the ability to square up with Bama and Georgia without flinching. Our dudes versus your dudes. So this isn't some spiel about Memphis sneaking into the playoff or who can just make it. It's about Ole Miss actually winning the national championship in something other than baseball. So get ready, Oxford. 2024 could be the year Daddy uh -oh. finally gets that promotion and Mama gets some walking round money. Did you say Kapua sweet? The Kapua sweet. Well, forget, forget Sarah Marshall. Yeah, if you know, the real ones know. The real, the real ones know that. about Turtle the humping season. Why does, that, why does that lady keep crying? Up in the Kapua suite. <laughs> I don't know. I'll, I'll tell her to I think it's the I think it's the person above me. And they're like, sir, you're on the top floor. <laughs> uh, but, David, speaking about the top floor, Michigan's definitely on the top floor right now. But looking to next season, I'm not talking about dark horse to make the playoff. That's a fun conversation. We can, we can throw it out there and making it cool. I'm talking about being able to win it, actually having the cats to win it. I mean, I look at Ole Miss. Mm. Where, where are they weak? I like it, man. I like that pick. Feels like... Texas a year ago, like they, if they could take yeah. that sort of jump, and plus they had the two best losses in the country last year. Penn State had great losses too, but Ole Miss on the road at Alabama, on the road at Georgia. I really like the Ole Miss pick. I did due diligence on three teams last night. That was Notre Dame, Tennessee, and Utah for my dark horse. I'm going to go with Tennessee. We've seen what Josh Heupel can do when he gets a, a high-quality quarterback with mm -hmm. Hendon Hooker a season ago. I watched Joe Milton play a lot of football at Michigan. I watched him play when he was named the starter at Tennessee. I sort of saw the writing on the wall like you guys did what we were going to expect this season. And even then, they still they were running with Alabama in the first half of that game. Uh, I, I like Tennessee next year. I was looking at the defense. Even this year, they ranked in the they ranked 22nd in They're total defense scoring teams. defense. And we got a small sample size with uh, Nico Iamalava in the bowl game. Iowa has a really good defense, man. You can say what you will about bowl games or whatever, but you know they really showed out, came to play. I like Tennessee uh, next year as, as my dark horse. The question's going to be for these teams, like the, the last three champions now have shown a specific blueprint, Georgia twice and now Michigan. Big physical teams who play elite defense and they are really good at running the football. You know, are we going to see sort of a transition back to more high-flying offenses and a spread offense like Elaine Kiffin or like Josh Heupel can sort of take that mantle again? That's why yeah. I'm interested in seeing it. Well, well too, I, I think when you look at Ole Miss, and this is something we've talked about a lot, Lane Kiffin does want to run the ball, sure. right? He truly, Josh Heupel wants to run the ball. We have this common misconception, I've talked about this since the J-Boy show, that every high-flying offense or every offensive savant just wants to throw the ball around the yard. Not true. Time whether it's Steve Sarkeesian, whether it's Lane Kiffin. It, it's, it's like a diet, right? It, it's all about balance. Yeah, man, look, you can have your chocolate cake every they now and then. They do want to go you fast, can... though. Oh, they do want to go fast. T tempo wise, yes. That's something but they have the ability to. Sure. To, but to will speed they? Up That's my down. question. You know, um, I, I think when you have depth on both sides of the ball, then you can actually do that. I think when you're looking at, at going fast, and obviously the, the way Ole Miss does it, Tennessee does it is different. Mm -hmm. Tennessee kind of sticks in that gear uh, for the whole game. Ole Miss kind of turns it on and off. But when I, I look at Ole Miss's depth defensively, that's the next step, right? It's, it's, and you brought up Michigan. You brought up being able to run the ball and play defense. Well, just like I talked about balance from running and passing on offense, team balance, winning in multiple ways. Typically, Ole Miss has been able to win one way. 
and that's outscoring you. In the big games they play in what, they want to outscore you. Whenever they get in these rock fights against these top-level teams, they're not able to get over the hump. But again, Tyler Barron, Princely, Walter Nolan, with what they return, with Pete Golding, a guy that I believe in. A lot of people make fun of him, Tuscaloosa. I thought he did a hell of a job this year with Ole Miss's defense. But it's, it's about having a complete team. It's versatility. It's not just, it's not being a one-trick pony. Even though with Lane Kiffin, it's been a hell of a trick. I think this Ole Miss team legitimately can be complete. And when you look at their schedule, another big deal, when we're talking about teams being able to not only get there but win and be able to stay healthy, Ole Miss has one of the lighter schedules, Blaine, yeah. in the Southeastern Conference. You believe in Ole Miss's defense? Yeah. You think they're going to, I mean, that's I what's been holding them back? You got proven guys. You got proven guys coming in. They rank yeah. 34 this year in total defense. And that for Ole Miss, that's huge. You rank oh, top God. 50 in total defense with Lane Kiffin on offense, and you return what they return, even with Quinshaw Junkins being gone. I'm telling you right now, this Ole Miss team is not showing up to the party in 2024 because they're excited they finally got invited. They're actually the ones that are trying to host the party and to get all the good-looking girls to come over. And just so happens, they're in Oxford, so they're already there. I mean, if he doesn't win one with Ole Miss, he'll for sure win one with Bama. What's one saving? Lane Kiffin is not going to Alabama. We need to stop the nonsense. All right, we'll see. I think he uh, needs as a as another assistant. Well, then yeah. it, it must have fallen. Uh, off the come on, dude. Who um, you got? I'm gonna go with Utah. Um, mm, I think I you, like uh, it. You know, one. You yeah. Know, obviously, who do you bring back? There's certain ingredients when you look at you look at teams. You know, being a dark horse to win a national championship. One, you look at the quarterback position. I mean, obviously, you bring back Cam Rising, who, in my opinion, will be one of the best quarterbacks in college football. And we talk about identity, and you brought it up. You talk about Michigan and Georgia. How you win a national championship? What are the ingredients to do that? You got to run the ball. You got to play defense. And if you want to talk about a football team yeah. that runs the ball and plays physical defense, yeah. even when they're in the Pac-12, the most physical team, in my opinion, in the back to Pac-12, you can talk about Oregon. This is what Utah does. This is Utah's identity. And you go through their schedule. Right now, the Big 12 is wide open. Wide open. I think their toughest game, realistically, probably is going to be on the road at Arizona. You go on the road to Oklahoma State. All winnable football games if you're Utah. You can walk mm -hmm. into the Big 12 championship almost healthy. They'll be the favorite in most of their football games, and you can lean on. You lean on up front on both sides of the ball, and you lean on Cam Rising. Mm -hmm. We've seen what uh, Jack Sparrow, Cam Rising, Garner Minshew, what he can do at Utah and the trust and the faith that they Whittingham has in this guy. They're proven. He's an older guy. I think Utah has a chance. Well, we, we've talked about the vacuum that's been created in the Big 12 with Texas and Oklahoma now leaving, and we've talked about Kansas State, right? We, we've talked about some of these other teams, Oklahoma State and Mike Gundy. I mean, Utah, to me, outside of Texas, uh, I mean, he's got to be the favorite to win the conference with what they were turning, right? And that's why I used to laugh when people were like, oh, man, Dan Lanning, he's going to bring a physical mindset to the Pac-12. He's going to try and build it identity-wise like an SEC team. Physicality, physicality, physicality. Kyle Whittingham's been doing that. Yeah. I don't know what y'all been watching. How did Utah elevate themselves? They were a physical team in a finesse league. And then all of a sudden, some other people got a whiff of it and said, hey, maybe we need to try this too. Now enter Dan Lanning and, and the Pac-12. I don't think it's some coincidence that after Utah started running it for a couple years, now all of a sudden it's a physical conference, you know, year three or four into it. I don't think that's a coincidence. Unfortunately, the Pac-12 then dissolved rapidly, uh, and and everybody kind of went their way. But I, I think Utah's listen to the, I mean, just state. listen to the schedule. They can win it. Southern Utah, Baylor, Utah State, Arizona State, Colorado, Houston, Oak State, UCF, Arizona, BYU, TCU, Iowa State. And again, you Undefe don't have to go undefeated. undefeated. Well, you, and you don't even have to do that anymore when we talk about a 12-team playoff. And once they get in there, they would have the physicality. That's one of the reasons I picked them to do some due diligence on. I still like the Notre Dame pick for the same reasons. Top 10 in scoring defense a year ago, and you bring in an, an, another quarterback. No, Sam Hartman's leaving, but Riley Leonard's going to come in. Back on my Tennessee pick real quick while we're breaking down schedules. They are one of only two teams in the SEC that has to play Georgia and Alabama both next God, year. I know who another one of those teams is. Yeah, it's Auburn, unfortunately. But, um, you know, they go to Georgia. We saw what happened two years ago. Remember when they when they go to Georgia? Now they will host Alabama um, this upcoming season. Which the last time the Crimson Tide came to Neyland Stadium, Tennessee threw the goalpost in the in the river. Selling Tennessee grass. will also go on the road to Oklahoma. So you can't lose all three of those games, right? No, like no. if you go ten and two, you'll have a shot in that 10, 11, 12 ranking to make the 12 team playoff, right? You, you, I mean, if you, you go nine and, and three teams, in the SEC next year, are you right? seeing nine and three teams make the, the 12 it team? It would have to be a circumstantially around it, it would have to work out. And also, it'd have to be the right nine and three. Mm -hmm. Like that, that there better be some, some pretty, 
some pretty damn good wins in that nine and some pretty incredible losses in that three. Mm-hmm. And when, but when you play a schedule like that, you can actually accumulate three pretty good losses. I mean, we're talking about Ole Miss having the two best losses in the country last year on the road at Georgia and Ole Miss. We want to know, is there a team out there that you think not could just make the playoff? I don't want to hear that. We're going to talk about that uh, till we're, we're blue in the face. But it could actually win it with what you're looking at right now, even though there is a lot of movement. Oh, hi there, YouTube. Hope you're having a great day. By the way, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, why don't you grow up, Peter Pan, and go ahead and do that. Turn that notification bell on so you know when we drop content. And get ready, March Madness is just around the corner.